Hey everyone, this is Ross Ratty, and today we're going to talk about fungus gnats and how to deal with that in a rooting environment. Um, what these little insects can do, how to get rid of them, and how to deal with them. Because really, you can't really totally get rid of them. Um, you kind of just have to put up with them. And there are certain strategies that I, I know of over the years that have really worked well for me, and we're going to get into that. Um, what I'm going to recommend to you guys, though, is that if you're interested in rooting fig cuttings, um, go back and you can see exactly how I've done this process. I have a whole playlist that I'm going to put down in the description of this video. A really detailed look in the process. This whole closet, how it was all set up. You know, how I've created this. The environment is really important. Um, you know, a lot of pitfalls, different tricks that we've run into. Um, just a whole host of different things. I think I've done a really great job of recording this for you guys. And if you've enjoyed it so far, please subscribe. Uh, please like this video. Um, I also suggest you guys follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. You know, another form of social media. You guys can get updates on this kind of thing more frequently. I'll certainly be making more posts on there that you guys won't get to see on video. We also have a new website that I released uh, just this week, rossratty.weebly.com. All that stuff's in the description of this video. I just want to thank everybody thus far that has watched any portion of the rooting process and you've I've taken you along on this journey and uh, it means a lot. I know a lot of you guys have learned something. I've gotten a lot of questions and hopefully I've answered those questions. So in this video, like I said, we're going to talk about fungus gnats. The first thing I want to recommend is that get yourself a little bit of a solution here. This is just a little bit of apple cider vinegar, half apple cider vinegar, I should say. Just get the cheap stuff, right? You don't need to get the stuff that's perfect for your health that has all that different junk in it, right? Get yourself some cheap apple cider vinegar. Um, half of that should be the, the vinegar and half of that should be water. Throw in a little bit of dish soap and you've got yourself a nice little concoction. You guys can get a little bit more creative with this if you want, right? You can throw in... Uh, you know, make it so that they can't get out if they get in. But normally, these what these uh, these gnats will do, guys, is that they'll get in this solution here, and they'll go diving in here, and they can't get out because they're soap, and that kind of really prevents them from getting out. So um, that's all we need to do. And we're gonna place this probably somewhere near the source of these fungus gnats, and the source changes quite frequently. Um, it really depends on what is dry and what's not so obviously we need to water our cuttings we need to water our seedlings things need to stay wet to survive so the biggest way you can get rid of them obviously is to make things dry they will lay their eggs in a wet soil um, of almost all types and I know it's it's more uh, frequent with things like compost um, it's less frequent with more soilless mixes but for most organic materials, which you probably are rooting in some kind of organic material, they will lay their eggs in that stuff. And it's got to be wet. So if you can disrupt their life cycle, that's the goal. So if some things are dry, like let's say this bin here I watered two weeks ago and I haven't watered it since. This is probably pretty dry now and it's getting to the point where I'm going to have to water this. Whereas this bin, as an example, I know for a fact, you can see kind of in the bin, if I lift these up, you know that the soil's moist. A lot of that water is kind of just sitting there. It's not really that great. And this is where the source of most of my fungus gnats are. You can easily find this, by the way, by kind of tapping on things, making things, you know, just hit a couple things, and you'll start to see these little bugs. I just saw a couple fly around here. This is the source currently that's in question. If you can kind of contain each of these little areas, let them dry out, right? You can't let the whole thing dry out at once. You know, that's really not going to be a good thing, but keep them dr as dry as you humanly possibly can. Don't overwater things, but if you can figure out the source, put this near the source here, this little concoction that I just told you guys about. And also you can do other things like natural is a really great product. Um, you know, I've also heard people have good success with hydrogen peroxide, but hydrogen peroxide is another form of a liquid. It's going to make things wet. So 
yeah, it may kill the eggs in the in the uh, in the soil, but you know if you keep wiping out the uh, the population in the soil by letting things dry out, you're not really going to need that stuff. I think that's really the biggest defense against this kind of thing. I know a lot of you guys like to get really intricate with this and do all kinds of crazy things, but I don't think it's really necessary. Another thing that I think really helps is these rice holes. Um, a lot of gnats have trouble penetrating into this stuff. Um, there's also other materials that people have recommended. I think like like pond pebbles is another good example. They can't really penetrate through the soil, through the top of the soil, to lay their eggs. So a lot of them, if they're found in here, are actually on the bottom, somewhere in the bin where a lot of that moisture is, a lot of that humidity is. I'll give you a really good example. See that down in there? That's some extra compost that has fallen out of these pots or has uh, fallen into the bin. And that compost is really wet. Every time I water this bin or water these pots, because this is on a slant, the water comes down into this little region here, the water sits. A lot of This is where a lot of that moisture collects and that's where the eggs proliferate. So if you can eliminate that, that's the goal. Okay, that's your objective. You know, get rid of this excess soil here and dispose of that. Make sure you're not causing a mess, right? I think that's really key. You don't want any excess soil just sitting around that's gonna just hold moisture for, for no reason. Um, but that's really the main takeaways here, right? If you take away the, the life cycle, you disrupt that life cycle of these, of these fungus gnats by disrupting the eggs, that will really decrease the population of the adults. And if then you decrease the population of the adults, you then decrease future populations of eggs. So they can really populate very quickly if you're not careful about this. I think this is the time of the year that a lot of people are struggling with this particular pest in an indoor setting. You know, this is the time a lot of you guys are doing your rooting. And I think it's been far enough now that everyone has just run into this problem at, at some point in their rooting process um, and I think it's just a really great topic to cover but you know again just disrupt that uh, that life that life cycle there um, I know that the adults have a pretty short window of life so if you can kill a lot of the adults by doing this you're also helping the process out a lot as well so you know, kill the eggs, that's priority number one, but if you can get rid of the adults, that also helps a lot, but even if you don't, if you, if you, even if you kill all the adults, or you think you killed all the adults, if this soil is still wet, they're gonna keep proliferating and they're gonna keep coming. So control the moisture, you know, take steps to eliminate that wet organic material, and you guys will be fine. I mean, as long as you're not overrun with them, they're not all over the house, uh, I mean, that really becomes the annoying part of this whole thing, so... Um, in my mind, they're more of an annoyance than a real serious problem if you can keep them controlled, so... Alright guys, thank you so much for watching this one. Like I said in the beginning of the video, check out the playlist on how to root these fig cuttings from start to where we're at right now. We're going to keep updating you guys as that goes along, and all this will be contained in that playlist so that if you guys have any questions, you can go back and look at that. Alright guys, take care and I'll see you tomorrow.